Good afternoon, time is Friday, October 4th. I'm Amanda Tolka. And I'm Nathan Evanhart, and you're watching Centen News. News. Have you started thinking about college, Amanda? To be honest, I'm having a bit of trouble finding the perfect school. Well, fortunately for you, Centennial High School has a very helpful college and career counselor. We now go to Gage for more information. Today, we introduce Ms. Martin, our new college and career counselor. She will be helping students decide what they want to do for their future. My role here at Centennial is the Collin College College and Career Counselor. So what I am tasked to do is work with students, uh, primarily uh, juniors and seniors, but also freshmen and sophomores, to help them kind of decide what they want to do after high school. How have I impacted? So I've actually spoken with a lot of students, well, I would say probably hmm, maybe about 30, 35 students so far, into really helping them understand the college process, um, understanding uh, the cost of college, how to apply for scholarships. What I can do is that um, oftentimes students come in and they're really undecided on what they want to do, so I provide a career assessment that allows students to kind of understand who they are as a student. It pulls out their primary and their secondary trait, which pretty much says if these things are not being fed in your career, it may not be a good fit, but also personality as well. As you can see, Ms. Martin has a lot to do. Go stop by and check her out. This has been Gage Lorenz with Centen News. College does make me a little worried, but it's nice to know that we have a helpful college career counselor to go to. Do you know where I can find a job? I'm trying to make some extra cash. Luckily for you, Diego has information on places to work. Being a teenager means Friday nights out, football games, and the occasional fast food. So that brings up the question, how do our students pay for all the extra things in life? For some, it means getting a job. Where do you work? I work at TJ Maxx. I work at Babe's Chicken Dinner House. It teaches you how to be responsible and how to sort of take care of your own because no one's going to tell you what to do unless your manager does. It teaches me that I have to earn things for myself and that I can't just get things by asking for it. How do you balance school and work? Um, you have to talk to your managers and make sure they understand that there's a balance between like school and work and if it gets overwhelming you have to talk to them and advocate for yourself to cut back on hours. To find out more about what our employers are looking for, we talked to AJ Sharman, the owner and manager of Salubrious Juices and More. What do you look for in employees? So when I hire somebody, I look for somebody who has a team concept. So if somebody has already a part, who, somebody who is part of a team, you know, that's a plus for us. Like if they have played any kind of sport, if they were part of any band, anything that gets them in a team concept, you know, is what we look for. What responsibilities do your employees have? They have a lot of responsibilities. We are not a big corporation. What that really means is that, you know, uh, they are going to be uh, responsible for everything, uh, going from, from being a cashier uh, to either making smoothies, making juices, taking care of customers, answering phone calls, and also taking care of cash registers. So it's a lot of responsibility. Getting a job is a great way for teens to earn money and learn responsibility. For Centen News, this was Diego Guerrero and Tommy Sherry Sherrill. Definitely some great work opportunities in the area. It's really nice to see that students are balancing work and study well. For sure. In addition, Centennial has some great teachers. We go to Megana to hear from Ms. Rosenfeld, one of our amazing teachers at Centennial. Recently, one of our Centennial teacher, Ms. Rosenfeld, won Lawyer Accelerate Law-Related Teacher Education of the Year Award. Asked to apply uh, by some people that I work for uh, with the, it's the state bar and they suggested that I apply, so um, they thought that I had a good opportunity to win, but again, it just felt like an honor that anyone would think that I would even deserve that award. I think more than anything, it's just nice to be recognized for the work that we do. Um, there's a lot of intrinsic value in what we do, so those awards are just kind of like icing on the cake. The students that I get to spend time with, the um, when we see the light bulbs go off or the energy that you have for the things that we learn. Teaching at Centennial is such a huge opportunity to engage with some incredible students. And so I feel like this award is as much them as it is me um, because they're the reason that I get to win. Congratulations to Ms. Rosenfield on her recognition for her award. If you see her in the hallway, please say congratulations to her for her hard work towards her achievements. This is Megana Vidala for Centin News. We sure are lucky to have Ms. Rosenfeld at our school. 
right? You are. And not only do we have some great teachers, but we have some very talented artists. Hey, have you noticed that mural in F Hall? Yes, and it looks amazing. We now go to Bailey with more information about the mural. Over summer break, new artwork was added to F Hall. Stuka came to us, told us they wanted a mural painted in F Hall, so I kind of gave it over to my kids. We had a lot of really good designs. I narrowed it down to about five, gave it to Stuko, they took it from there. Senior Emma Dixon was over the moon when she found out her design would be in F Hall. When I found out that my design was going to be in the hall, um, I kind of was speechless. I was like, what? Like, I thought my design was very simple. Coming up with the design took some thought. So I knew I wanted to represent multiple people coming together and kind of the fabric of the school. It took two weeks to paint the mural. During the summer, I came up to the school with a few of my friends and Miss Ham, and we had to plot points onto the wall and scale up my design. Then we waited about a week and we came back and we just painted it. The inspiring artwork represents Centennial as a student body in a unique way. The Titan Sword obviously is a representation of us if we're Titans and stronger together means if we all work together, you know, Centennial can become something great. They hope to see more student art in the hallway soon. I'm Bailey Coyle for Centen News. That mural definitely brightens up my day, but you know what makes me even sad? What? The fact that people in this school aren't treating our environment properly. Everywhere I walk, I'm seeing bottles and paper in the trash or trash just sitting on the floor. It's unacceptable and I can't stand it. That's terrible. We need to recycle. We do, and luckily Matt has an important announcement for us about the importance of recycling at Centennial. In today's environmental climate, the three R's are as important as ever. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Most people know about and definitely do their part with recycling, but it's even more important to reduce and reuse. But how can you do that? Well, let's talk about reduce first. There's a lot of things you can just cut out completely. Plastic water bottles you can replace with a refillable one. Plastic grocery bags, instead you can use a cloth reusable bag. Uh, if you're a coffee drinker, make your coffee at home and then use a reusable mug or thermos. You can even buy a reusable straw. You can also reuse a lot of disposable products that normally just generate waste. Uh, you can use plastic bags as dog poop bags instead of buying them. Buying your clothes and other household items from thrift stores like Goodwill instead of buying new ones. And instead of buying a book, you can see if you can find it at the local library. As you can see, there are a lot of ways you can cut waste out of your life. So always be on the lookout for ways to shrink your carbon footprint. And always remember to reduce, reuse, and recycle. With Centen News, this is Matthew Pajak. Now I definitely see the importance of a clean environment. Of course. Also, it's important to learn about how to be safe in school. I definitely agree. Let's go to Austin to fill us in. In today's society, school safety is becoming more and more important. School safety is the number one most important thing that we do. Um, in any school, it's the most important thing. If kids don't feel safe, they can't focus on getting an education. Centennial has added new safety procedures this year. We've started something this year um, and it's really um, bringing in common language for res first responders and it's called Standard Response Protocol, SRP. Um, also during the time that we have our drills, now it's automated rather than somebody coming in on the intercom and saying, hey, go to lockdown, go to lockdown. Um, you'll hear lockdown, um, lo locks, lights, out of sight. Mr. Montag explains why you aren't allowed to wear hats or hoods in school. The reason is, um, you guys know that you know there's surveillance cameras throughout the building, and the thing is, we don't want to misidentify somebody if there is an emergency event that's taking place at our school. I'm Austin Murphy for Sen10 News. Have you heard about all the cases recently of people getting sick, being hospitalized, or even dying from vaping? Unfortunately, I have. A lot of people don't realize the serious effects that it could have on their health and the type of damages to your life that it brings about with it. Ian has more information on vaping and how it's not something to take lightly. Due to the recent increase of vaping, the addiction to nicotine has increased dramatically. Statistics show that there are more teens addicted to nicotine than teens with depression. Well, I'm very concerned, along with all the other teachers here at Centennial High School, with this increase, we are seeing tremendous hazards happening to our teens. If you watch the news this summer, you notice there were several teens that were hospitalized in very serious and life-threatening conditions due to vaping. Um, kids your age are still growing and developing, so their bodies are still forming. 
Um, a lot of kids think this is just water vapor, so how can it be hazardous to your health? Well, inside that water vapor is tar, nickel, um, and most importantly and most dangerous to you is nicotine, which is gravely addicting. And um, with these hazards, um, kids are subjecting themselves to lifelong health hazards. And I'm just hoping that kids will realize uh, the importance of their health and their lungs before they make the decision to vape. Let's work together to snuff out vaping and smoking titans. This is Ian Adams reporting for Sen10 News. Thanks, Ian. I think you've showed us that vaping is something that, cannot, that can seriously damage your body and isn't something to play around with. Any recommendations for TV shows? I'm trying to find something to watch. Of course, Stranger Things, Riverdale, Friends, American Horror Story. Those are some great recommendations, but I already saw them all. Well, luckily for you, Owen has some information on some good shows to binge watch, Amanda. With the school year starting up, we could all take the time to watch a show that helps us wind down after a long day. So we asked Centennial students, what are you binge watching? I don't really know if it's like a hidden gem, but it's an anime <laughs> called Cowboy Bebop. And I think it's really good because it has a lot of jazz in it. And I like jazz. <laughs> the Good Place Season 4 is coming out in this month. I'm excited for it because it's good, but also sad because it's the last season, so, yeah. What do you usually look for when you're trying to find a show to watch? I'd like it to be Seinfeld most of the time. That's usually my criteria for a show. If I'm looking for a show, it 100% has to be Seinfeld. Um, I usually look for good character relationships because, and like, and good writing. For a show to be good, there needs to be like, a plot that makes sense so like not like some like Riverdale stuff you know there's got to be humor I think even if it's like a serious show there's got to be some lightheartedness this is Owen Davis with Sen10 News I'll give those a try looks pretty interesting Amanda did you know that in Texas every 57 seconds a car crash happens that's horrible drivers need to be more careful Luckily, Tommy has some valuable information on safe driving. In Texas, to obtain a driver's license, you must show proof of residency, social security, car registration, and pass a driving test. However, not all drivers exercise responsibility while on the road. As many of our students know, Coit College and Rollator are hot zones for car crashes. Our Centen News team investigated the causes of school zone related crashes. First, we obtained crash records from the Frisco Police Department. The results are astonishing. 11 hit and runs, 55 minor crashes, and four major crashes in the last two years. Distracted drivers put everyone on the road at risk of a deadly crash. Accidents happen, but when you're driving distracted, intoxicated, or with disregard for others on the road, it's not an accident. When you're driving, fully commit to driving. For Sen10 News, Tommy Cherishero and Diego Guerrero. Okay. I'm glad that Tommy showed us the importance of being safe while driving. With that said, I've noticed that a lot of students are actually driving themselves to school now. Titans, if you are driving yourself to school this year, it is essential to acquire a parking permit. You can purchase a permit at any time. Prices start at $50, and starting in January, the price will be at $30. You can also buy a permit online at onlineschoolfees.com. Thanks, Amanda. Now, let's go to Craig for a Titan sports update. During the McKinney-Boyd Bronco Stampede on September 7th, runner Grace Easley placed 11th out of 107 people in the 5,000 meter for varsity 5A and under. On Thursday, September 26th, your Centennial Titan football team came up just short in a heartbreaker against the Colony Cougars with a score of 35 to 42. But despite the loss, running back Jawan Washington had a dominant performance on the ground with 230 yards and a touchdown. The CHS varsity volleyball team faced the Independence Knights last Friday but fought hard and came up just short with a score of 1-3. to three. The depth of the FISD tennis talent shows in the 5A state midseason team tennis rankings, which include six Fresno ISD high schools in the top 20. The list published by the Texas Tennis Coaches Association that includes your Centennial Titans at 5th, Lebanon Trail at 9th, Liberty at 12th, Independence at 13th, Wakeland at 16th, and Frisco High at 18th. And congratulations to homecoming kings Thomas Singler and homecoming queen Lauren Hayden. 
That's all for this show, Times. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Suntown News and check out more stories and information at www.suntownnews.com.